All right, everybody say, I got you. Come on, say, I got you. All right, we started this series back quite a while ago. And uh, actually, on Christmas Sunday, we started this. And it's based on this, uh, as far as I got you. Is it's based on the scripture where Jesus says, I've got this new commandment for you, and it's to love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should love one another. And so we've been going through the uh, New Testament and just how, what these areas, these phrases of one another throughout the New Testament, how it applies to us, how we can use it in relationships, and also how it just spreads and demonstrates the love of God to other people. And so whenever we say, I got you, it's like, look, I understand you. Look, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to compensate. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be like the one in the middle. I got you. And so that's what this series is about as we're moving forward through this. And we have uh, hit different areas like honoring one another, bearing with one another. How many of you are sitting next to someone you have to bear with? And, no, I'm just kidding. All the wives, like, hands up. Wives can get away with it. Guys, it's like, goodbye, you're done. Anyway, but, uh, but hey, we talked about encouraging one another and, and all these areas to where they can really help and improve our relationships with people. And by the way, wasn't it cool to see Sam and Brian from Tennessee just giving us a shout out this morning? Wasn't that cool? And uh, that was a lot of fun. And we just have those kind of technology type things we can do now, which is great. But uh, we're going through this series, I Got You, and, and hitting these one another's. And we've hit all these other areas. And isn't it fitting that on Valentine's Day, we're learning how to really love each other? On Valentine's Day, we talk about love. We have all the little pink hearts, the red hearts. You, you get your wife something or your girlfriend or your boyfriend, husband, whoever it is, your kids, and you, and you get them this. But man, what's a better demonstration of love is the one another's in the Bible to where we're learning how to do this. And so today, I thought what I was going to talk about today, I thought this is like the exclamation point on this series. And so I got ready, and I got set, and I'm like, man, on uh, February 14th, Valentine's Day, that is going to be the end of this series, which everyone is challenged in the most, and then all of a sudden, there was one more one another that I left out, and next week I'm going to talk about it. That is the most powerful one another that we can apply to our relationships and friendships and with our marriages and whatever it is that we can apply, but today we're going to talk about how to forgive one another. How many of you just forgiveness just seems easy? Don't even, oh, okay, some of you maybe, but for the most part, forgiveness isn't an easy thing. It's something we have to work at, especially there may be some things that are really easy to forgive, but there are some areas that are like, there is no way I'm ever going to forgive so and so, or I can't forgive that. How many of you have been in that place before to where it's hard to forgive people? All right, we're getting a little bit more honesty as we're going along. So my question is this today. I want to, I want to start with this. I want to just kind of get you to ponder and think in, your, think in your mind and in your heart this morning. I just want to ask you this. Do you have a forgiving heart? Another way to put that, and this is probably even stronger and strikes to the core of who we are and, and where our heart is, is do you have a heart to forgive? When looking at other people and relationships and how you respond and how you react and how you interact with people is, do you have a heart to forgive? I want to have a heart that is out for forgiving people, but that's just not always easy. If, can I be human and just be real as a pastor? It's just not always easy. Now, if you can, if you can believe this, I, I'm just kind of surprised. We've already been in like almost a year into this whole COVID-19 deal. And about a year ago, there was another pastor who really mistreated me. And I wanted to be transparent with this and, and just share so that we could be on level playing field today. But there was a pastor who um, I would see occasionally. And one day, he just said some things that were like, surprisingly, I couldn't believe it was so hurtful to me. And, it, and, and I was shocked, and they were thinking, I mean, and he said some things, I mean, he had decided in his mind what he was going to say to me, and, I, and, and my, I'm like, is this, is this really happening right now, or is this me, or, or did, I, did I do something? And, 
I mean, and not only that, did he say some things, they were like in front of other people. So not only did I feel horrible and like trash, now I was like embarrassed because other people were just kind of overhearing or seeing what was going on, and I was so embarrassed, and I, and I was upset. It upset me like, anything, like any of us would be. And I think what even took it to another level was after that, there would be times that we would see each other still or run into each other, etc. And he acted like nothing ever happened. He never even, I mean, it was like we were having, you know, everything was great and chill. And, and, and he never even said anything or sorry or, or, you know, even called me to ask me a question about something. And, and, and what do you do when you've been offended, mistreated, you've been hurt, you're upset? What do you do? How do you forgive somebody when something like that happens? I had a choice. I have a choice. You have a choice if you're going to forgive people. Now we're faced with this because it's like an impossible task. This impossible task of forgetting people and being able to move on, it is so difficult. And some of you have uh, faced things that are so like Anybody in here may write down and say, that is unforgivable. You're right. That is no good. And, or we have had things done by people we trusted. Or we have a constant issue that keeps coming up. We have a memory that flashes back sometimes. And it is just hard to forgive. And we don't know how to get past it or to get through it. Now today what I don't want to do is try and tell you about forgiveness, give you a few scriptures and say, now everything's going to be great. Go and do likewise like Jesus and your life will be fine. Come on, I'm preaching, right? That's just not the world we live in. My goal would be, though, that there would be some sort of urgency that would be created inside of you to where you would say, I don't want to live my life in a place of not forgiving people. And that you would understand the freedom and the greatness that we do have when we forgive people. Everybody say amen. amen. All right, stay with me this morning. And I want us to look at this scripture where we just hear flat out, straight up, to forgive one another. It says this. Let me move this over. It says, be kind. Everybody say, be kind. Be kind to each other, tender hearted, forgiving one another just as God has forgiven you because you belong to Christ. Because you belong to Christ, forgive one another. Now, I want you to see this here. Let me move this over just a little bit. We're going to get to this in a second. You know, the America's finest dessert. Come on. But I, but I want you to see this here. Is that with these words kind and tenderhearted, they just don't go with unforgiveness. What they do go with being kind and being tenderhearted, they go with forgiving one another. So what's the opposite? If we are not forgiving people, we're not going to be kind, we're going to be mean. And we're not going to be tenderhearted, we're going to be hardhearted. Is that how you and I want to face relationships in our lives and in our families and in the workplace? Do we want to be hard-hearted people or mean people and we just, we're grumpy and we're not, we're not happy people at all? There's nothing worse than like unhappy Christians. There's nothing worse than unforgiving Christians or mean, nasty Christians. There's nothing good about that. We've got to learn how to forgive one another. But that's an inside job and it isn't easy. And, and so how do we get around this? Because I don't think any of you want to carry baggage in your life and in your heart because someone mistreated you or did you dirty that you hold on to that and now you end up not forgiving anybody and you're a person that you don't even like to look in the mirror at. We're talking about forgiving other people. So how do we do that? And we feel like I know this is the right thing to do and I feel better because I'm doing it. Not only for myself and my own sanity, but for the forgiveness of another, of another person to where our relationships are having quality. I believe the Christians, Christians should be relationship experts and knowing how to love one another. Everybody say one another. And so I've got a word I want to teach you today. This is like a, actually a brand new word. You've never heard it before. I'm making a word up, okay? We're going to submit it to the Webster's Dictionary, dictionary.com or whatever. It's going to be a word. I'm just kidding. But it's a, it's a different kind of word. Everybody, I want you to repeat after me. Say, for take. Come on, say, for take. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor. 
Don't be a foretaker. Okay, so I want you to hear this today. This is going to be the most important thing that you hear from me this morning is what I have to say. Be a forgiver, not a foretaker. You can follow along in your notes online or here on what you were given. Be a forgiver, not a foretaker. I'm making up a word. Well, what are foretakers? We know that forgivers are people that they go ahead and it says forgive one another. We know that that means just canceling some debts. That means just releasing somebody from some wrong that they've done. That means able to not have a grudge but just release them. That's what forgiving people do. They're generous. But for takers? For takers aren't happy people. For, for takers are more like the mean than the hard hearted. They're not like that. They're the ones that want revenge. They're the ones that are bitter and have resentment to where they are not going to be for takers. They're going to be or they're not going to be forgivers, they're going to be foretakers. Now, none of us in here would say this, well, I'm not a forgiver, I'm just not going to forgive anybody, and blah, 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 I don't foretake. Let me, let me put it this way, this is some, sometimes how we become foretakers. That we say, I'll forgive them when they. I'm not giving them anything until, they ta- until I can take and they give to me. Or you think I'm going to forgive them after they X, Y, and Z? Do you really think that I'm going to do that? And what we're doing right now, we're foretaking. We're not forgiving. And so we're holding these things against people. And when we know that the Bible says and what God says is forgiving one another, and if we trust that it's really going to make a difference in our relationships, then we have to be at a place where we say, I'm not going to be a foretaker. I'm going to be a forgiver. And today, again, I don't want to make it seem like this is going to be all rosy. I just want you to be inspired and have an urgency to say, I need to start having more forgiveness in my life and in my heart. And there's a few points I want to make today that I hope just stick with you, that hope you'd help you to just see things through a different lens. But the first one is this, is forgiving is a God and you thing before it's a you and them thing. Forgiving is a God and you thing before it's a you and them thing. Right away when people do things and it bothers us, what do we do? We start thinking about all the reasons why we shouldn't forgive them. We start like mentally pointing fingers, finding faults, thinking about how wrong they were. And our mindset is down here instead of up here because we are thinking me and them right now and how are things are going to work out. And before that even happens, forgiveness, being a forgiver, is about you and God first and where you stand. And when you and I see our place with God and learning to forgive and understanding his forgiveness, then it, may, it just changes the climate to where other people don't determine who I am in character and at the core. That I'm not going to be a foretaker because of so-and-so did this. But I'm going to be a forgiver because before anybody else comes in, the conditions that I have for God is he loved me, he forgives me, and because he forgives me, I forgive other people and I, I spread it that way. But that's not always a hard thing to do. It, Jesus mentioned this in the New Testament in the gospel. He says, but if you do not forgive others their trespasses, which trespasses, that kind of breaks it down right here, their reckless and willful sins, leaving them, letting them go, and giving up resentment. If you don't forgive other people, these are the things that we do when they're reckless towards us or when they're mean towards us. It's intentional. They willfully did it. He says this, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. That you may say, I'm not going to let them get past this. I'm not going to let them get away with it. And I'm not, they don't deserve it. And, and we have all these reasons why. And it says, if you don't do, do that, you're going to miss out on the forgiveness of God. And I believe the spirit of this, of what God would want us to hear, and how for, we should look at it moving forward, is simply uh, think of it this way. That don't think about what they did, think about what I did. We think too much about what other people do to us than what God has done for us. And because of that, we get caught up in a life of unforgiveness instead of being reminded of, I have a God who forgave me, put Jesus on the cross, his only begotten son, shed his blood, blood cleaned up the mess. I did all of these things wrong. I wasn't right. I got it wrong. I missed the mark. But he forgave me anyway. 
When we understand the power of God's forgiveness, it just changes the circumstances and the conditions around us to where I can't hold this in. I don't want to be a foretaker. I want to be a forgiver. And in the scripture in Hebrews, it spells out how powerful, how complete the forgiveness of God is in Hebrews chapter 8, it says, I will forgive them, and he's talking about his people, the wicked things they did. Now this, you know, when we hear wicked, we think witchcraft, you know, worship Satan, blah, 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 you know. Anyway, it, it's not saying those who are in witchcraft, it's, it's talking about the wicked wrong things, the wrongdoings, the things that are just morally corrupt and not right. He says, I will forgive them the wicked things they did, and I will not remember their sins anymore. Now think about this. When someone has offended you, it's hard for you to forget that. You, what do you mean forgive and forget? Are you kidding me? Do you know what they've done? It's like when you've walked into a restroom and someone is in there and you didn't knock. And you see things you won't want to see and you can't unsee it. It's just there. It's, it's there. It's stuck. It's kind of like that's how forgiveness is. Something happened, how do I want, to, how in the world am I going to forgive that? God doesn't, for, doesn't want to remember anything that you have done wrong. And I want you to see this. This is what's so incredible and how powerful and how intentional God is about forgetting um, the sins that you and I have done. He is the omniscient God. The all-knowing God knows everything in the past, the present, the future, the small things, the secret things in your life, the, the things around the world. God knows all things. Yet somehow, he is able to overrun that system and say, I'm going to blot it out and forget it. And you are, I don't even know that part of you anymore. That Jesus is able, that God is able to do that through the blood of Jesus. That he does something supernatural that when we come to him, he forgives us and wipes it all away. He doesn't see us like that anymore. And that's the forgiveness that we have from God. And when we go in situations with people and we've had conflict or, or there's just tension or whatever it is, that we got to be reminded, man, before this involves him, i got to be reminded of what God has done for me. And in me before I worry about what God is going to do or what's going to happen between us. And there's something about foretakers if they don't follow and they don't understand God's love. As foretakers live spiritually disturbed. Foretakers, everyone say foretakers. I got you saying a fake word today and I can't even believe you're doing it. Foretakers. They live spiritually disturbed. Now, I don't know how many of you have caught yourself doing this before. You're, you're driving, and you're, you're going somewhere. Maybe you have friends. You have the music turned up, and, and you're driving around having a good time, and you're trying to find a street, right? Trying to find a turn, trying to get your way there. And how many times have you, have you guys done this before? You're looking, and you're just searching. All of a sudden, you're like, shh, turn the music down. <laughs> like, oh. All of a sudden, sound, it just, I heard the street, right? <laughs> no, no, but something is like disturbing. Something is there that there's a blockage here that my, my attention, my senses are going different directions. And that's what happens when we have unforgiveness in our heart. Is that it can just spiritually disturb. We have disturbances when we're driving. We have the music up. But man, there is something spiritually disturbing when we hold unforgiveness in our heart. And, and some of us here, if I can be real honest and kind of straightforward, and this may minister to some of you, you find yourself wrestling with God, and maybe it is. I challenge your thinking. Maybe it is because there is someone that you don't want to forgive or you're struggling to forgive them. And it is disturbing your spirit. And Jesus points so much urgency at this. In the Gospels, he says this when it comes to like getting into the presence and getting closer to God. He says, and when you stand and pray, forgive anything you may have against anyone. Does it say some things? Does it say a few things? It says anything against anyone. No one singled out. Well, you don't understand. That's an unforgivable one. There are no unforgivable ones. Or God would have said, there's some that are unforgivable, and some of you are just doomed to hell. You don't have any chance in heaven. But no, anything for anyone, we have forgiveness. 
Come on, I'm preaching now. But here are two big words. So that your Father in heaven will forgive the wrongs that you have done. So you won't be spiritually disturbed. Make sure when you're trying to get close, when you're trying to get a posture that is closer to God, forgive anyone and everyone of whatever they have done so that, man, you and God are closer. There can be unity and there, we can be free of disturbance with God and when we begin to forgive. But foretakers, you may find this at times when you've been foretaking, that you just somehow don't feel right with God. I know I have. When there's something that's just off and not right and I've needed to forgive somebody and it's been hard for me too, it disturbs my spirit and even the way I connect with God. So don't be a forgive or a foretaker, be a forgiver. That's what's so important because forgivers, they go a different route and they have something different. Forgivers get filled with freedom. Forgivers get filled with freedom. Literally, when you forgive, it heals and it forgives you in your body. John Hopkins University did a survey, and they noticed something in the body when it comes to forgiveness. That it actually can lower the risk of heart attacks. It improves your cholesterol level and your sleep. It decreases pain. It lowers your blood pressure. It, it removes stress and tension. That's literally what forgiveness can do in the body and in you physiologically. But even spiritually, it can set you free and give you, give you deliverance and, and bring freedom because you're not foretaking and holding on. But you're willing to, you're willing to forgive. And I want us to see this in the scripture. It says this, if we can bring this up. Do not judge and you will not be judged. I know someone the other day that um, I was talking to, her and her husband, or now they're split up and they're divorced, and uh, forgiveness has been an issue. As always, that just happens, and with exes, and you know, and, and they got kids, and it's, it can be such a mess. And she, she told me this, is that, you know, they, they just made it hard on each other. They wouldn't forgive, they were upset, when it was exchanging kids' time, it was like just, you know, they weren't working together. They were working against each other because there was all these unresolved issues and they were four takers. They weren't four givers. And she just got to a place to where she said, you know what? I just don't want to live this way anymore. And she, she went to him. She said, and I just told him that, hey, because obviously she had, she had forgiven him and her spirit. She said, hey, I just want to ask for forgiveness if there's anything I've done. I just want to work together. And as she was sharing this with me, there was a freedom that was happening inside. She just felt better about the outlook, about the relationship, about who she was. That's because forgiveness brings freedom. But if you choose to foretake, you're going to be shutting yourself in. And your relationships, you're not going to have longevity in relationships. Because every relationship is going to have some hiccups. Every relationship, it doesn't matter if it's a pastor, if it's a teacher, if it's your spouse, if it's your frenemy, it doesn't matter. There's going to be some conflict. You're going to have that. So how do we get around it? This scripture right here, Jesus said in Luke, it says, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Judging other people and condemning other people don't go along with forgiving. So he said, don't do it. You got you to be kind. You got to be tenderhearted. Don't judge them. Don't condemn them. But you got to forgive. And in order for us to be a forgiving person and find the forgiveness of God, we got to stop making judgment calls against other people and saying, you were wrong. You did this. That wasn't right. You should pay. And you're never, and, you're, and we start having all these judgmental thoughts of them. And then we start condemning people and what should happen. And we want bad things to happen to people. And then we become malicious and all these things. And now we have taken any type of freedom away when we have been foretaking instead of forgiving other people. And that's how we find freedom when we're able to get beyond condemning and judging other people. And so you and I have a decision, a choice that we have to make. Do you want to be a forgiver or do you want to be a foretaker? 
That choice is yours. And our worship team can come right now, but some of you, as I'm sharing this, you might be wrestling. Honestly, as I'm speaking, I just sense like tension in the room. And that, beco- that comes sometimes because it's, it's just like God is pushing some, some buttons and it's hard because have you ever had someone that you needed to forgive but you like did not want to forgive them? You, it wasn't like it was hard. It was like, no, I don't want to. No, I don't like them. I don't like the way they smile. I don't like the hairspray they use. I don't like, you, you, you know what I'm saying? I, Eli told me about that. I, that wasn't me. But, but we don't like them, and it's hard. And, and we have a choice to make. If we're going to be people who have find freedom and they forgive, and we don't live spiritually disturb, um, disturbed lives. And I think about that issue that I had with a pastor, and I, I share stories like that because I want you to know pastors are flesh and blood. We, we don't walk on water. And you know, I don't know what the pastor, this pastor friend was going through when he said those tough things, man. They were hard and they upset me and then acting like this, there was just nothing wrong. That was hard. But I made a decision that I'm going to be forgiving. And I'm going to tell you where I found the freedom. Is that every time I know that there's forgiveness is when I'm willing to be kind and be tenderhearted. And when I'm kind and I'm tenderhearted, there's a forgiving of other people. I don't need anything back. I don't need an apology. I don't need any of these things. I'm doing it because I want to honor the Lord and the forgiveness that he's given me. But I also want to be forgiving of other people. And I don't want the treatment of other people to determine who I am as a forgiver instead of a foretaker. If we go back to the scripture that we read in Ephesians 4.32, if we can go back to that, it says... Be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God has forgiven you, because. It's all for the because. Because you belong to Christ. It's because of this, that because of what Jesus has done and the forgiveness that I've gotten from God, it's because of that that I choose to forgive and to be kind and to be tenderhearted. It's because, check this out, because I belong to Christ. I don't belong to my pain. I don't belong to the mistreatment of other people. I don't belong to the memories. I don't belong to my past. I don't belong to ugliness. I don't belong to revenge. I belong to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, and may his forgiveness just bleed out of me. That's who I belong to. And may you and I find ourselves at a place of... I'm not going to belong to that. I'm not going to belong to the problem. I'm not going to belong to the conditions. I'm not going to allow that to own me. I'm going to belong to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. There's this song. I grew up in church, and there's this song. We're kind of doing older church songs today. It's kind of cool. But the song goes like this. I am yours. You are mine. I'm your cup, pour out your wine. You're my candle, Lord, and you make me shine. I'm yours, and you are mine. I belong to Jesus, and I want to be like Jesus, and I want to be a forgiver, and man, it is so hard not to be a foretaker, but man, if we could just overcome that, and and here's where the urgency kind of kicks in and takes place. I brought the American original. How many of you, come on, it's like you just like one of those late nights where you just throw down. Right? How many of you have ever, if you can be honest, you've eaten a whole pack of Oreos by yourself? Okay, good. I'm not alone. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know about party size. Now, (laughs) if you can do that, you're awesome. Anyway, I'm jealous. Okay, so check this out. One thing about Oreo cookies. I had to. I didn't want to just show them. I wanted to eat one too. Here's the thing about Oreo cookies. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Jesus. Here's the thing. Well. Mm. Hey! Oh, okay, sorry. Here's the thing. Oh, mm. front and center. Check this out. I don't know about you, but when I'm going to get down and eat some Oreo cookies, and it is like Oreo night. There is, I, I, there's no way I can have this without this. Somebody, can someone say amen? Right? I can't go and get some Oreos and like drink water with it. Right? I'm not going to go and, and get, you, you know, some juice or, or you, you know, have a Pepsi with Oreo cookies. I, I, I'm going to eat these cookies and I'm going to give me some milk. Because I can't eat Oreo cookies without having my milk. And I want you to see this. This is how the forgiveness of God works. Is I can't give you my forgiveness unless you have this. Unless you have the forgiveness working in you. I can't give you this. And I want to give you this. God wants to forgive us. God is generous. God wants to wipe away everything. You know your forgiveness actually affects your eternity? The way that you forgive who we are as a church, as believers, if we don't have this, we don't have God's forgiveness. Your eternity depends on your ability and your desire to be a foretaker. And God can't give us this until we have this. And my heart would be for you that you would say, you know what, I so much want to belong to Jesus and the forgiveness that I'm willing to forgive anybody and anything as hard as it is because he first loved me. Would you stand with me this morning? Would you just close your eyes for a minute? And I want you to, oh man, we need to hide these after Eli. Who do you need to forgive? Sitting on the couch at home, who do you need to forgive? Who is a person, a circumstance, a group of people, whatever it is, that you've been a foretaker? I'm not giving them anything they don't deserve. They can't have, there's no, and we're foretaking. There's no way that we're forgiving. I want you to know that grace is forgiving. And I so want God's forgiveness to reign and move through your life that you can forgive anyone, anything, and anyone. But closing your eyes for a minute, some of you have had some big things happen. It's just hard to forgive. Some of you have some ongoing things or persons, people, I, you know, I don't know. But you know right away there's some foretaking going on in your spirit and you don't want to stay there. That even as I'm speaking, remember I said that um, foretakers have um, spiritual disturbance. Sometimes I think maybe there's some disturbance going on in your spirit right now because it's hard to let go and just say, God, I release them to you. I just want to pray over that, that God would break that. I believe that there's, there's a, some bondage right there. So, Heavenly Father, I come in the name of Jesus. Come against the enemy right now. We break unforgiveness today. Lord, the spiritual discern, or disturbance, God. Lord, I pray that you would bring peace, God. Lord, where there's a frustration or a contention in their spirit. Lord, would you bring freedom today, God. Lord, by forgiveness, Lord. Father, I pray that you would break that in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want purity with you. We want union with you. Lord, we want community with you, God. I pray that we wouldn't be stuck anymore in the unforgiveness. But we would be able to have victory and forgive one another. And I think one of the main ways that we begin to do this is we desire all the sweet things that God gives us is to exalt those things, exalt him for what he has done. Remember that before it begins with anybody else, it be begins between you and God. 
Can we just begin for a minute to just go back into the song, I exalt thee? And God, I exalt you because of the forgiveness that you have given me. I exalt you because of the past is taken away. I exalt you because I have hope in a future. I exalt you because of what you've given me. I exalt you because you remember my sin no more. I exalt you because you don't even know what I'm talking about right now. You've forgiven me, Lord. We exalt you today. And when you, would you do this in an act of faith and worship? Would you just join in with the worship team right now? You may not even feel it. You may feel disturbed. But can we just have a breakthrough moment for a second and just begin to say, God, I exalt you right now even above where I am at. Let's sing this.